What's up everybody, Gundam Flexing here, and in this video we're going to be checking out the NX Edge style Evangelion Test Type 01. This is the Night Combat version. This Bandai product came out in 2020 and can cost you roughly around $40. Now as the name implies, this guy is from the very, very popular anime show Evangelion. And for those of you who haven't seen it, I would highly recommend going back, watching the 1990s version first, and then progress your way through the movies. And for $40, you get quite a bit. Aside from this awesome looking Unit Type 01, you get a ton of weapons such as a Gatling gun, you have a rifle, you also have a mounted rifle, and you also get a combat knife. Other periphery items include its very own stand and a removable jaw and its own weapons locker. So without further ado, before we would go into the unit we see in front of us, let's first check out all the weapons. And coming up first is my favorite, is this awesome looking Gatling gun. So if you watch Evangelion, this Gatling gun was used pretty much against the first angel if I recall correctly. This is a pretty cool detailed weapon, it has all the barrels, and there's also spaces between the barrels so it's not all molded together. Here we have the Gatling gun drum. And here's the other side, and here is the holster, or for the handle, excuse me. And coming up next is probably one of my favorite weapons as well, is this positioned rifle. This thing looks like a giant sniper rifle, which would pretty much what I would call it because of its very long barrel, but it's detailed as well. Here is the barrel, here's the piping system, and it's really cool because you have to think that the unit is so big, he's pretty much like a walking giant building. So in order to position this rifle for him, it actually has little tracks at the bottom. So it could go through right there on both sides. So that's pretty much how this weapon is being transported around. And here is the magazine clip, which is not movable. And next is his handheld rifle. And we're going to go over the little case, but first, this is just a very basic rifle, very flat as you can see, here and here. And then finally, his last weapon is the combat knife, and this is a very basic weapon as well. Pretty much is like a one-sided knife, right here. And as we're on the topic of weapons, something very important to note. This unit only comes with a pair of four hands. So you have the open hand, like this, for both left and right, here. And this is a single piece made out of soft plastic. And then you also have a pair of weapon-wielding hands, like this, for the left and right. Now using the combat knife as an example, because it's probably the easiest, as you can see, none of his digits uh, have like joints in them, and instead, because it's a single soft plastic piece, you will have to pretty much grip the weapon and put it into his hands and move all his fingers like that. Um, at first I was a little bit scared, especially with the bigger type weapons or the heavier type weapons like the Gatling gun like this, because you have to position the hands and move it in such a way that I'm scared I actually might snap the plastic, but that's not the case. Um, once the hands are in there, the grip is really, really tight, and again, all you have to do is pretty much angle it at a certain, uh, at least angle the handle at a certain way where the hands won't get caught, and that's it. What's cool about it is that the wrist here, too, doesn't interfere with holstering the weapon into his shoulders, so that's pretty nice. And also, on our topic on small little pieces, he has a second jaw. So basically this guy comes with two different jaws. One is a shut jaw and the other one like here is an open jaw. Now to me it doesn't really matter because experimenting and testing around, uh, I just found out that the jaw here for his closed mouth, the pieces right here where it would go into a little slot is so tight that you're able to just mildly open his jaw with the closed jaw piece and it looks like his mouth is open, which is pretty cool. So really, this piece isn't really necessary. And also, we have an umbilical cord with a storage locker. Now, this was also in the first couple episodes where he's fighting the angel and this thing comes bursting out of the ground. It's pretty cool. And here is the umbilical cord to connect it from the storage locker all the way to the unit itself. As you can see here, 
It's just connected by a very simple piece. It goes in like that, and you could also apply it to the other side. Now one thing to note is that this is um, pretty much like almost like static. It is movable, obviously, but the way it connects to the unit is through this little gap right here, and you have to put it through the back right in there. Now, funny enough that the way it's positioned it, as is right now, that's not how it's supposed to go in. As a matter of fact, the, way, the right way to put it in is if you twist it through the top, which sort of uh, like adds a little bit more stress to the other sides. It's just sort of weird. That's what I noticed is that you're not supposed to attach it through the bottom. It's supposed to be attached through the top. But this weapon storage is only meant for his handheld rifle. And as you can see, there's like two little pieces right in there. And you could just put the rifle like this. Now, one thing to note is that there is no real mounting. So in other words, this rifle, the way it is now, there's like no snapping pieces or anything like that. So if this thing were to tilt forward, it would fall out very easily. So it, in a way, it's pretty good because um, because this little opening area is so small, you don't want to just keep on uh, grabbing the uh, grabbing the weapon and try to pull it out. So it might be a little bit too difficult. And in a bad way is that if this thing accidentally gets knocked down, it'll fall out very easily like that. And it's only meant for, again, this rifle. Some other extra stuff which I didn't really find too important here is the stand. So this stand is pretty cool. As you can see, it's a very certain uh, distinct shape with little slots right here and little bulging pieces here. And that's because if you collect enough of these, you could actually start attaching them and expanding the stand as big as you want. It could also comes with uh, like a stand upright portion here to make yourself a wall. And as you see here, you have holes here, and there and there, all around the stand. And that's just so you could also place these pieces here in order to put underneath the unit and make them stand up. Now, you don't have to use this stand in order to make the unit stand up. Uh, he is capable of standing up by himself. But whenever you add the weapons or whatever, he may get a little bit too lopsided, heavier on one end and not on the other. So the balance may be difficult. Aside from this long piece here, you also come with two little small pieces here as well that'll fit somewhere, anywhere on the board. Haven't really used them. Uh, to me, I, I'm pretty good at balancing him myself on his feet. So here it is. And also, interestingly enough, the stand also comes with three giant pillars, which again, you'll have to buy it separately, more of these in order to connect them all together. But this one, it's pretty weird. All you do is you just Put it through the top like that like that it's pretty weird don't really have a use for it but it is an option once i guess you start collecting enough of it and that's pretty much it for all the extra periphery items and now for the unit zero one who's missing both his hands but he is a really, really cool figure, not just in mecha, but just in terms of overall design and color scheme. I really like this type of transparent type purple, which is just covering the vast majority of his body. As you can see here, all right here, it's pretty much transparent, so you can almost see like through the other end. And then you have a very strong contrasting color, which is neon green. And that's just, in my opinion, all the right places, really. Um, he really stands out, catches the eye a lot. Here, because it's NX Edge, his head is pretty big. And again, with his jaw right here, I just have to barely crack it open and it'll stay in place. When all reality, this is a closed jaw and all I have to do is just snap him in place like that. And there it is. Here's his head with his mono horn. And let me tell you, this thing is actually pretty sharp. Here is his eyes. And if you wanted to see how far he can move his head like that and this, pretty much like that, nothing really impedes it. You have some pretty cool fins on his shoulders, right here, right here. And in doing so, I accidentally popped out his arm. So I guess now's a good time to talk about the strength of the joints. I don't have a big issue on the strength of his joints. Um, primarily, the you have the joints in the ankles, the knees, the hips, the elbows, and of course his head. Uh, if you maybe grab him too often and position him, it might come out and it might get knocked loose. But in general, I would say that I haven't had too much of an issue with it. He has pretty cool fins here, open fin there. 
could grab his elbows like here, like there, and the main portion of his limbs are connected like this, almost like a PC cap for Gundam. But you could snap it back very easily. That there's the other side. Here's his chest, and here's his back, here, you can even see the back portion of his helmet which is pretty cool. And this is the opening slot for his umbilical cord for the weapon storage locker. He has a very thin waist, he has two legs with again similar style to the top here on his shoulders, he has them popping out on his kneecaps there. And unfortunately, these things are not movable. So in certain ways, if you wanted him to kneel, uh, you would have to kneel him in a position where his legs are actually split apart like that and not knees directly pointed to the ground. His legs are connected to a ball joint right here. He has pretty good flexibility in his knee like that. And thankfully, his flexibility in his ankles are also very good and his joints there are stiff so if you wanted him to stand he's easily able to stand without being uh, knocked around too easily with weak weak joints like that yes boom so yeah the nx edge style evangelion this is a such a cool looking model love the green i love the purple i love that it comes with so many different styles of weapons i mean this gatling gun is freakishly awesome you don't really have to use this stand and you don't really have to use his second jaw piece here um, if you wanted to you could also just again just have him stand up by himself apply the storage locker and then use the umbilical cord to connect him to it or whatever but if you do have issues uh, mounting weapons and balancing and then that's when the stand comes in very handy. These weapons are also pretty freaking cool too. So that's all I have to say about the Evangelion Unit Type 01, the Night Combat version. If you have any questions or comments, please post it down in the section below. As always, I appreciate you watching and if you haven't seen Evangelion, highly recommend it. It's one of my top 10 favorite animes of all time, except the main character, he's a douche. But again, Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to wash your hands, don't touch your face, wear a mask, and stay safe.